What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dying Light. I'm happy to have you here today as we plumb further into the depths of Haran. I think we're going to take a look around for a little bit and see if maybe we can find ourselves some goodies in some of these neighboring houses. I ran around for like a second right before just because I was playing around with visual settings, just trying to make sure that the viewing experience was as pleasurable as possible while at the same time being like performance efficient because there's sir like I don't know. I think I might need to update, like, a graphics card or something like that because, frankly, it seems like, a little bit anyways, like, there are certain situations in this game that lag out, like, a really, really good computer, honestly. Like, I, I've got a GTX 980 and a couple other things. Like, I just built this computer a couple weeks ago out of, like, the best parts I could get at the cost. And frankly, like, it's definitely pushing things to the limit. So I wanted everybody to have, like, that good performance combined with the fact that the game still looks pretty good so I can have it up in 60 frames. In the last couple episodes, performance has been a little bit sketch. So, you know, I don't know. Your mileage may vary with your computer. I have no idea. For right now, oh, good. Just climb up on that antenna. He doesn't need reception ever again. It's fine. Do we have... Oh, there's a box in there. Did I... I thought I... Hmm... Maybe it's because I closed the game down. I think this game works just like Dead Island, where if you close the game down, it actually respawns all the loot and everything else becomes available for perusal one more time. Unless it's empty. Let's find out. Let's look. Yeah, it's still empty. So I guess that it's kind of like a limited case of that. I'm not sure. Maybe it's when you actually shut the entire game down. Either way, we got to go onto the roof and let's contact the GRE and figure out what they want. Crane here. Report. Okay, I met this doctor, scientist type. They've got him set up in a sort of research trailer and he's working on a cure for the virus. His name is Zera. Hello? Do you copy? Affirmative. Secondary objective added. Maintain your cover and secure all of his research. Acknowledge. Your stolen file still takes top priority though, right? Affirmative. We find it unlikely that a single researcher working out of a trailer could produce any significant results. But if he does, we want to see it. You know you could just ask him for it, right? Dude, I mean... It's done. Good. We'll need to prepare more places like that one. We've got more spots picked out for future safe zones. Spike will mark them on your map later. And Crane. Thank you. Back to you, Spike. Right now, you need to get back to our main task and arm the next trap. There's another car close by. Got it. Okay. And so we're going to arm some traps. We did find a little bit of a... I don't know if people want, like, the background stuff or whatever, but I haven't been able to find it. It's in here somewhere. Like, you pick up journal entries, and where you read those from, I'm not really sure. Like, you pick up journal entries, and there's, like... I don't know, it's not under any of the other quest, like, related objects or anything else, but essentially you pick up, like, little diaries and things all over the place, but as of right now, it doesn't appear to be super apparent how you read them, so I'll investigate that in between episodes too so that we can figure it out. First things first, we probably need some med kits, that's probably a decent use of our gauze and also of our alcohol. Med kits allow you to heal quite a bit by comparison to some of the smaller items, like halva or baklava that you can pick up that just kind of give you a little bit of health for eating them. On this side, we can actually, let me make some lockpicks too, we need a couple more. And right here, with some items, pay attention because occasionally you get multiples for different items and, as a bonus, there will actually be skills that you can pick up from the survival tree that will increase this number. So it'll make it so that you're more efficient while crafting, so eventually you'll be able to make six. Or, for example, you get three Molotovs here, there's a skill that you get that allows you to produce five at a time, and things like that, out of the same materials. So you get better and better and better at these random scavenging-related activities. I'm probably just going to make a fistful of these things, because I'm always running out of them, especially since I'm not the kind of person that's going to walk away from, like, a very, very hard lock-picking job. Like, I just do it anyways. I'd also like some Molotovs here. Basically, I brute force my way through it, because the loot is worth it. Ninja Stars are pretty awesome, but we're going to hold off on those for right now. Later on, you get some modified throwing stars which are sort of like explosive throwing stars, ice throwing stars, elemental ones essentially that help you get rid of the enemy if they're all up in your business. And so, meh, nice things to have. Those barrels down there, if you kick enemies into them, it one-shots them in case you were wondering what those are. That is precisely what those are. They are insta-kill booby traps. Infected There's are all over the street. So what does that tell you? Keep off the street. Try to stay on the rooftops where they can't reach you. They're all around the car, Spike. You still have some firecrackers, don't you? Just throw some into the crowd. Those dead bastards are easily distracted. Ooh, let me get her out of the way. She's appear she appears to be unarmed. I mean, I don't know though. She 
There we go, we'll finish her off. We don't have a lot of high quality weapons right now, so unfortunately dealing with large hordes of zombies probably going to be kind of a pain in the ass until we have those things. But for now, our goal, he's doing the latest craze in the in the zombie dance scene. It's just called the reach. Like, do the reach. Uh, do the reach. And then all of a sudden, you know, DJ Mustard's made the song like, Mazadana B. How? Yeah. The next thing you know, every single song will just have like, hey, 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 in the background on the backbeat. Let's see here. So we need to throw firecrackers. Maybe over the... Oh, no, I threw the firecrackers in the wrong spot. The car, I thought we need to... Oh, we need to arm both of these. Okay. So let me see if maybe we'll throw some firecrackers over there. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be pipelining them around very well, so we may have to fall back on slightly more efficient means for eliminating zombies. Hmm. All right. All right, I know. You're here, you're undead, so get used to it. Let's find out. Let's throw that, like, right there, maybe, and then jump up to here. Maybe that'll pull them off that way. The firecrackers, unfortunately, don't have, like, an amazing duration, so I hit that guy with a firecracker. I don't know. It's like when you were a kid and you had Roman candles, you'd shoot them at each other. That was half the fun. Obviously, it was dangerous, but it was a blast. And I, just, I don't just mean that because you're playing with improvised explosives. Come on. All of you get bundled. There we go. Get bundled up. And then... Molotov. There it is. And so now what you want to do is you actually want to be, like a human piece of bait for these guys, as though I could be anything else, like a rodent piece of bait or a feline piece of bait. Still, you know what I mean. You actually want to come down here and be live bait for these dudes, just to see if maybe, eh. Let's go ahead and block off the entire alley too. Oh, there's another one back here. Oh my god. Okay, so this is getting out of hand really, really quickly. Ooh. Okay, so that explosion's probably going to be a problem too. I didn't realize that we had to deal with an explosive barrel in there, so unfortunately, while it did help clear out our enemies, it also may have brought some specials down on top of us. And I don't mean that in a, like, his mommy says he's special type deal. I mean, like, they are actually special and have, like, really cool abilities and stuff. There's explodey ones. There's spitty ones. Like, all the ones you would expect from any zombie game. There's runny ones. There's grumpy ones. There's drippy ones. Even zombies on bikes. There's all kinds of... No, there's no zombies on bikes, although that would be impressive. I know zombies aren't necessarily known for their dexterous skills or dexterity-related... Oh, man. We're out of stamina, so let me go ahead and light them on fire, too. Take a look at our power level right now. Look how much XP we're getting per zombie. Just be careful and make sure you don't light yourself on... No, don't kick the car. Open the car and fix it. There we go. All right, so let's get these bombs lit up. Hopefully not with us standing next to them. I think the zombie shouldn't be able to get at us. Keep on like that. You just might make it. The next trap is not. I should have to tell you, but don't get caught out in the open. Spike, these freaks are everywhere. If I need to use a trap, how do I activate it? You can't. I told you, they're only for the night mission. Shit. Okay. All right, then. As you can see with this blue quality wrench or this blue, it's a pipe. I know the difference between a pipe and a wrench. Anyways, this blue quality wrench right here is doing a lot more damage and allowing us to kill zombies way more efficiently. When they despawn, they leave these packages on the ground. I don't know. They look like chickens, but they're actually not. I mean, I... They look like little, like, kilos, like you would see in a drug dealer movie, but, eh. Let's go ahead and we'll whoop. Eh, we're out of stamina. I'm going to hold off for a second because I don't want to go through the whole painful process of having to regenerate. If you take a look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll also notice another couple, well, a pair of numbers next to our items. I realize I didn't really explain that very well in the previous episode. So what that is, the one with the little hammer next to it is how many times you can repair the weapon before it can no longer be repaired. It's just too busted up. You can't hold it together anymore. It falls to pieces in your arms. The number underneath that is the amount of parts you have available in order to fix the weapon. All weapon repairs take one part but there are some special cases that you'll need to be aware of like some weapons have like modifiers and things that make them take more parts to repair but in return they're a lot deadlier a lot more badass for now we've leveled up a bunch of times but we went like we used so many resources to kill this many zombies that I'm actually very very interested in looting all the corpses touching every single torso as much as possible there's nobody around go ahead touch it pick it up pick it up nobody will mind especially not the zombie it's gone let's go ahead and get him out of the way there we are couple more of these. I think that's everybody. We get it all? I want all the loot while we're down in here. Not a bad day's work. 
Not a bad day's work. So other things that we can do, we can get inside stores. Stores typically have all kinds of goodies that you probably want to have. Did I already loot in here? I did. This is a DVD store. How long has it been since the last time you've seen a DVD store? These don't exist anymore. I wish that they did sometimes, but basically the only place you can get that kind of stuff anymore is like Rasputin's or maybe like Best Buy or, you know, any other random location where they sell like a little rack of DVDs. But by and large, like specifically, ooh, one, two, three dollars. I don't know why, but I like it when things like that line up. So, for example, I very much like the fact that it's 2015 right now because it's divisible by five. And anybody who's been around the channel for a while will tell you that Splattercat is obsessed with things being divisible by five. I, I don't know why it is. I didn't, like, consciously make that happen, but I like it when numbers are divisible by five. It just makes me happier. This is a medical facility. Ducking in through here, we may actually be able to get some free med kits if we get really, really lucky. Let's have a look. So we got some gauze right there, so at least we have the stuff to make more med kits if we need to. There's a little bit of halva right here. That's something that I've never had, but people tell me that it's pretty good. Some people have told me that it's really, really sweet, and other people have told me that it's really, really good. It kind of depends on whether you like super sweet stuff. There's also baklava and stuff around. By and large, I actually haven't had too many, like... I don't know, like Turkish slash Greek slash, you know, type desserts. I just, I haven't. I've had Turkish Delight before. Somebody gave me a box of Turkish Delight when they got back from Turkey one time. But they, it was a flavor that I, I don't know, the American palate is not quite accustomed to. I'm not going to say that I, it was bad because that would be sort of like, not offensive, I guess. It would just kind of like be mean because some people like the way that it tastes. And it's just something that I wasn't prepared for. It tasted like rose petals, actually. It was candy that tasted like rose petals, and I'd never experienced something like that before. By and large, here in the United States, we tend to, like, make everything out of just, like, chocolate and sugar. And so weird flavors, or interesting flavors anyways, I won't say weird, interesting flavors, like rose petal, kind of an odd taste. Very, very odd taste if you're not used to it. You'd be like, huh, it tastes like a rose bush smells, but it's like a gelatin almost, kind of like, I don't know, like a... It's like jello with powdered sugar on it, I guess. It wasn't bad, but I just, I definitely wasn't accustomed to it. I wasn't ready for the flavor that it entailed. I guess it closed all these off because I was fiddling with the settings and had to close the game down. But, by and large, I feel like the game is playing a lot better right now. I'm happy that we took the time to do that. I think it did help. I'm going to kick this door in, although I think I've been in here already. Yep. Straight through the window. Where are we going? We're going to this way and a little bit to the right. That sounds right to me. So instead of veering, get on those spikes. I wanted to show, there you go. See, I impaled him through the ass on a wall full of spikes. And then he kind of just fell over. That seems like the worst orifice to be impaled through. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be impaled through any orifice, but just, I don't know. A large, like, spiky thing through the ass seems like it would be just too much for the day. I'd be like, all right, I need a timeout. I'm going to be honest, I need a Slim Jim, maybe like an energy drink, and then we can get back into this. But for right now, it's not, somebody's going to have to take over my shift. I'm calling in sick. Can I kick this open? A lot of things in this game can be broken as well and sometimes have loot inside of them. So you really, really do. Like, they went above and beyond with, like, the random stuff you can loot in this game. So it's a good idea to, like, have a look around at any given time to just see what you can find because you will make a lot of money. we got baklava over there. We don't really need it because our health is full up. Can I take those cans? No. What's this? Jump drink. That sounds pretty awesome. It seems like that would be easy marketing, too, because then you could play that song that was in, like, every kid's movie in the 90s, that get on your feet and jump or get off your feet and jump around, or however the hell the song goes. I don't know. I haven't heard it since back in, like, the Home Alone days, but anyways, that song. You guys know what I mean. It's got that weird sound in the back. I'm like, Wah! I don't know. Let's see. Oop, trash can. All right, get our hobo on, just like every other crafting game. Like, if you really take it down to its base components, every crafting game is essentially like a hobo simulator. I brought this up the last time I played the game, but I figured I'd recycle a little bit of, like, random comedic content just in case. We have unspent skill points, so in the interest of maintaining your dentition, because I know I wear you guys' teeth down to nubbins. Ooh, aerosol. All right, I'm going to level up right... I'm going to kick that table. Oh, never mind. You can't kick and break the table. We got some nails. Okay. Let me see what we can accomplish here with what we have. So, blueprints. We can make lockpicks. We have a whole bunch of stuff for med kits. And actually, I, yeah, I think I'll go for a couple of those. I don't know how many. Does it tell you how many of an item you have? I don't think it does. But I am interested in just, like, as many Molotov cocktails as we can carry around. I mean, obviously, I could click the next part of the inventory and just find out. Should probably make some more firecrackers, too, just in case. It takes plastic, huh? That's a little bit of a rare. It's not super rare, but you'll find plastic around. It's just kind of, I don't know. You don't find it as much as some of the other stuff. So we got that, and I think the whole point right now 
what see right there there's some plastic lovely so I think the whole point anyways in this menu was for me to sit down and actually like level up my character we got an agility level the first one here is gonna be dodge and so essentially it allows us to dodge back and forth like you can in just about every other first-person melee game by pressing the space bar in a direction it just makes you do like a little crow hop to get on out of the way and then if we go back Let's see here, we've got our power menu. We're going to have two options here. We could take kick stun, which your kick has a 10% chance to stun the enemy. Stunned enemies are easier to kill. Or we can go with multi-throw, which means we can lock onto three enemies and then throw weapons. Seeing as we can't even throw weapons, I think it comes with being able to throw weapons when you use that one right there. I don't like throwing weapons that much. Like, you already have supplementary throwing weapons, like throwing knives and throwing stars, so throwing your pipe at somebody always seems like a waste to me. I think I'm going to go with Kickstone for right now. I don't know. People aren't going to agree with my decisions as I level up my character, but you know, it's my playthrough, and I'm going to try and justify my decisions as best as I can. Like, I have a specific play style that I play in, like, every game, and as we get this thing fleshed out, we'll slowly start to figure out what things can be moved around a little bit, what things I don't have to be so conservative about, and what things I can try out that are new. Obviously, if there's a really, really cool ability, I tend to be really drawn on towards those as well let me go ahead and see if I can knock her down oh it killed her never mind those teeth right there those teeth right there lady you need to find yourself you need to stop messing around with the undead and start messing around with a toothbrush I'll tell you that much there's that sound you heard right there they actually the zombies spawn through numerous locations they crawl out from under cars they break out of windows they do all kinds of stuff I don't know if I kick him off the ledge will it kill him there we how god that looked painful that's look like a skate video gone wrong right there. Alright, so let's jump up here. And now that we're on the ledge, I don't know, it seems like there might be good stuff up here. Can you overhand reach that? No, you can't. I guess that was his way of telling us no, absolutely he cannot. Alright, let's jump down. Why do they have bricks and tarps on top of their house? Is it just like to waterproof it, I guess? You kind of just like pin it around the edges and then just let the water run off? Huh, interesting. I don't know, there's very few things as useful as a tarp in the modern world. Like, seriously, if you have a tarp and some duct tape, you can basically invent any object that you need in order to get by in life. It's weird. To a weird extent, you can do that. Alright, so let's leave this locality. It looks like we've got some kind of, like, underbridge location. I actually went to Jamaica one time, and a lot of the locations I was in looked just like these, actually. Like, big shanty towns. That was the biggest fail on entry I think I've ever seen. You dove out of the door... Say what you will about zombies, they're not good at entering the fray without killing themselves off. So he impaled himself on some kind of fish hook thing around the window. This one's gonna fall, I bet you anything. Aw, oh, never mind. I don't bet you anything. I bet you very little that he's gonna impale himself. I retroactively bet you very little. Alright, so we've got that right there. Searched out a couple more lovely things. I can hear them breaking out of buildings here. I'm gonna crush all these crates though, just in case. Let me repair my weapon too. There we go. Get that thing nice and pieced back together so that it's more useful to us. I think I may actually. Let's swap to the green one. I'm going to swap to the green one for just a couple minutes because I'd like to save the blue one for, like, desperation and times of need. Looks like we got some goodies up in here. Household supplies. Okay, I'll take those. The household supplies in general are used, like, in explosives and other kind of, like, random alchemical concoctions, I suppose. For right now, though, we're not going to get our alchemist on. We're just going to kind of, like, move towards the goal. I get kind of sidetracked when I play free-roaming games like this, so you'll have to scream at me in the comments if I'm doing it too much. If you want me to be more linear, tell me to be more linear. I can do more storyline stuff if that's what people are into. If people don't want storyline and people want me to just, like, dick around and look at everything in the world and just, like, have a good time and explore, we could do that, too. I'm a fan of both. I tend to actually really, really fast-track the main storyline, and then after that, what the hell is going on over here? It's quite a contraption you got here. Three times brighter than an ordinary street lamp. Yeah, the, the infected in this game don't like UV lighting. They actually get quite the nasty. I don't know if you noticed, but they lack in pigmentation. They get nasty, nasty sunburns from some of these booby traps. And the ones that come out at night are even weaker to it. So, obviously that's going to be a tactic that you want to employ throughout the game as you're playing. I'm going to unlock this bad boy over here. I don't know if he's the bad boy. He might be the bad boy of the crate world, or he might be super friendly. It's hard to tell just from exterior appearances. Let's find out what we got in here. No whammies. 
Okay, so it looks like we got a pipe wrench. Sure, I'll take it. We got some coffee. All right, that'll make us a little bit of scratch once we get up out of here, too. Let me go to my inventory, and I'm going to start phasing out. Yeah, actually, let's phase out that final gray item. We'll get the pipe wrench up in here. The UI leaves a little bit to be desired if you're playing it on the PC like I am. Sorely due to the fact that a lot of it seems to be optimized for a controller. They've done the best they can to port it on over, but the game is definitely, you can tell it wasn't developed for PC. It was developed for a console, and then a team was developed to, like, port it. You can tell. Just because a lot of the menus really, really make a lot more sense if you have, like, an Xbox 360 controller or a PS4 controller. Not complaining, just pointing it out for some of the people that might want like little critiques here and there as to how the port is other than that it controls great with mouse controls like none of the major issues Ooh, a hard lock picking task okay looks like it's gonna be slightly to the left maybe there we go we got it we found the sweet spot we found that money spot and let's see what we can get cash out of in here we got ourselves a blue water pipe and a brawler mod very cool so let's take a look and now that we've got another blue pipe, I figure how much better is the blue pipe than like, I mean, it's got to be, it's 22 versus 27. You can compare things through a separate menu somewhere. Yeah, like that. You right click. And so if you right click something, it locks it down into this menu right here. And then you just mouse over the one you want to compare to. And so the water pipe in this case is much, much better. Although, wait, that's the other water pipe. Hold on. This is the new water pipe. So the new water pipe actually has more repairs than it has capacity for two upgrades. So let's do those right now. Why wouldn't we? Let's go ahead and see what we can throw onto these things. And actually, I always forget that it's F6. I always feel like there's going to be like another tab that I can go into and find this. But no, it's just F6. There we go. The water pipe has two empty sockets. What does Brawler do for us? Damage and handling. Okay, so plus six damage. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, let's go for it. And then over here we got Crusader. Ooh. This weapon's getting itself a little bit of extra DACA. I am down. And so there it is. I mean, I just wanted to play around with the upgrade system because it was disabled the last time I had access to the game. You actually couldn't get into any of those menus. It would block you. No matter what you did, no matter how hard you struggled or grunted, you just couldn't have it. The game wouldn't let you. It wouldn't allow it. I will be playing this game on the side in my own free time, by the way, just so you guys know. So I'm going to do my best not to show off any spoilers. I mean, obviously, I think we've been through about the first three or four chapters of the game in the press preview. But everything after that's going to be all new. And honestly, I'm hoping we'll get a lot of episodes out of this game. It seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about being able to cover it. This is one of the first times that the developers of a AAA game have actually wanted me to cover their game, and I'm pretty happy about it. It's it's nice. It's nice. Let's go ahead and activate that right there. Okay, there's numero dos. I'm going to try and get all these squared away before we finish the episode. There was loot down there, but not going to concern myself with it for right now. Hold down the space bar when you're flying through the air if you want to, like, hazard to save yourself when bad things are happening. That one right there. Oh, never mind. It's over there. Okay, so that'll be all right. I'm going to try and weave my way around these guys. I don't know if I can actually climb this or not. Or if I'm going to have to find another way up there. I think I may have to jump off this building, which looks like the easiest access. I love jumping puzzles, too. Just to let, like, the new viewers in and let them know, like, the things that I'm into. I love jumping puzzles in games like this. Assassin's Creed. I don't know. What other games had jumping puzzles? Far Cry 3 and 4. Like, I love jumping puzzles in first-person games. I don't know why I do. It's just, like, I have fun with them. All right, so while we're right here, this looks a little sketch. I don't know. Are we going to make it? Oh, we made it. Hell yeah. Okay, so now having made it, the game lags out really hard right around nightfall. I don't know if other people have brought this up, but I don't know. Okay, lights are all set. You ready for the next one, then? Better hurry. Okay, so I broke my ankles. Hey, guess what? I'm up on a balcony, and I got eyes on you from here. Looks like you're doing okay for a newbie. Gee, thanks. Just try and get back here in one piece, all right? I don't want to have to train somebody to replace you. Okay, and so this actually, this mission is timed in such a way where the game will set itself closer and closer to darkness, like the further along that you get. Do I have my flashlight yet? I don't think they gave me a flashlight yet. I think they give it to you once you start doing night missions. But anyways, yeah, if you want to see, if you want to see shit get really raw, I'm actually going to try and constrain myself to staying out all night every night. That's just like a modifier I'd like to do for the game because I'm familiar with it. When you stay out at night, you get a lot more XP, and it's a great way to level up as long as you can survive things. I'm just going to grab the coffee for right now because we don't need the extra weapon. You can see it's actually visibly getting much, much darker, and we actually don't have to hustle. It's, it's programmed to do that. But later on, the game is actually just going to cycle in between day and night, and you just need to be, like, aware of what you're trying to accomplish and how dangerous it is. 
there's also some random like instances I don't know how else to describe them they're almost like dungeons where there's special missions you can attempt I'll show you a couple of those as we go through the game too but essentially you zone in and much like a dungeon in like a MMO almost it gives you like a set of things you're supposed to do and there's like pre-built bosses and like essentially running puzzles and things like that that you've got to accomplish along the way the final trap is it up at the top of that right there Looks like, oh, never mind, it's right there. We're good. We are good, G. Let's do this thing. Ooh. That looks unsafe. Fuck, Spike, the whole goddamn district went down. What the hell's going on? <sighs> Not again. All right, listen. There's a power substation near you. Go check it out. If by check it out you mean tank whatever's inside it with my face, I'm on it. Let's go do this thing. No skills allowed. Only Newbery and Blunt Force... And brute force, also brute force. Hey, this blackout has really put us in a tight spot. We're defenseless here. Plus the safe zones and some of my traps are down too. We need to get the power up and running ASAP. I'm going as fast as I can, Spike. And so what we want to do right now, because we... Or maybe we should not kick the explosive. What we want to do right now, because I have, like, metagame knowledge, is we actually want to, like, set that up over there. And if there's any more of them, I would prefer to do similarly. Let me see here. Kick that open real fast. Survivor Sense. I still have no idea. Like, I've played this game, like, 25 hours. And Survivor Sense, as far as I know, I don't know. It lets you see enemies' broken bones and stuff like that so that you can, like, work their jaw if they have a broken jaw. But much past that, it's probably not going to do much for you. And there it is. What is this? I call him Mealy Mouth Mega Tiny. That's his that's his nickname. And believe me, that hammer hurts like hell. It is not a fun hammer. So if I take this and I throw it at you. Hmm, that may not work. Let's think about this right here. I'm gonna try and stay out of the way of him. Oh man, that's not gonna work. I messed that up royally. Okay, so... Let me get in here. I'm going to let him have it. And then try and stay out of the way with my dodging skills. He can hit pretty fast, though, so be careful. He recovers a lot quicker than you think if you've never fought him before. He recovers... Oh, shoot. Got myself all cut up and out of stamina. I'm done. I'm sweating. I can't do it anymore. Cut me, Lou. Cut me, coach. There we go. Let me see if I can get in here and work him a little bit. Ooh, I might have... Oh, I thought I was going to eat that one right there. We got this guy, though. We got this guy. Yep. I understand. You are frustrated. You are frustrated with your service through Comcast, but you can't take it out on me. You can't take it out on me. All right. So we've defeated that guy. You can pick up this hammer, by the way. There are two-handed weapons in the game, if you are so inclined. I don't think you could put them in your backpack, though. I think you can only put them in your active slots. Let's try it out for a second. I can actually drop these because they're basically worthless. So we could find out. D did that go in my inventory? Oh, it did. Okay, so if you're interested in two-handed weapons, they're available, and they do a lot of damage. Like, they are straight gangster when you drop the beat on somebody with this thing, or drop the beat down, I guess. Let's get five dollars. You got five dollars. You didn't die with five dollars in your pocket. This guy died with like two hundred dollars in his pocket. He liked to live riskily. I never carry around cash. Nope. I'll be like, I got plastic and that's it. Got to be prepared just in case you get mugged. You never know. You never know. That is a hell of a boil on the side of your head. Damn. That seems like it would be really, really painful. Oh, you know something bad's going to happen in here. There's no way. Oh, something terrible is going to happen in here. Oh, it actually flags objectives and things. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's interesting. Instead of opening this, it's on a hinge right there, watch. I bet it was something simple, like we could have just pulled it open either way. It wasn't even locked. He just wanted to rip the side off of it so that he could look manly in front of all the other runners. All right, I've got the substation reset. But if the grid shorted once, you know it could happen again, right? You leave the electrical engineering to me, okay? Just get your ass to a safe zone. You're going to have to spend the night there. Okay, so there we have it. This is going to be the end of the episode for me. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dying Light, a game that I've been really, really excited about. I can't wait to come back and play the next episode with all of you. It's my pleasure and my privilege. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow or whenever the next episode drops. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hi, do, everybody.